Well, good morning. Let's uh, turn your hymnals to number 127. Let's stand, please. Number 127. From God we adore. 127. salvation 
God, I pray that we would grow in our love for you and in our service for you. God, may you be honored and glorified in, in everything that is said and done this day. And we give you the praise already. We love you now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Take just a moment and welcome any guests that we might have with us today. 
And so if this, if this is your first time here or first time in a long time, we ask that you raise your hand and our men will give this connection card to you. We thank you so much for choosing uh, to worship with us this morning. We ask that you fill out that card and then put it in the offering plate when it comes by in just a few moments. And once again, thank you for being with us. And uh, we have uh, the deacons, uh, Dave, actually, Chairman, has decided to take you all out to Westside Diner after the, the service today. However, however, there's no uh, in, in the dining room seating, so we're going to have to cancel that. You have to come back another time, and maybe that'll happen. So I apologize. Uh, we'll blame Dave for it, but uh, we know it's not his fault. Uh, but thank you so much for being with us. Be sure to put the, fill that out, put it in the offer place in just a few moments as it comes by. I'm going to ask if y'all would please stand, and as Ruth plays to a verse or two, let's walk around and greet one another this morning to give everybody a good warm welcome. Christmas. 
Uh, it doesn't sound very appetizing after talking about turkey, but I'm sure the program will be great. Uh, and they've been working hard, and I'm excited about that. So be sure to be here 6 o'clock uh, for that on December the 6th. Bring somebody, invite somebody to join you as well. There will be a cookie fellowship uh, afterwards. And so we're getting all this. Uh, Pastor Barnett was talking about this is a dangerous time of year. He's talking about the service. Dangerous time of year because we eat so much good stuff. And uh, it's hard to refrain, but but you're only young once, right? And so yeah. we're all young. We're all young in this room. I mean, we've got an eternity to look forward to. So we're all young. Uh, and so uh, we'll have a cookie fellowship following that Christmas program. Uh, and excited about what our young people learn. It'll be a great opportunity to invite family members that may be in town. Uh, the gospel will be clearly presented in the drama, uh, and then also I'll share uh, share a message from the Word of God as well. And then uh, just uh, some of the other events that are coming up. We have our Christmas Eve candlelight service. That'll be at 5 o'clock uh, on the 24th. Uh, we have uh, our young people have a Bible quiz meet Saturday, December 12th. And that's going to be right here at the church. Uh, and I'm excited about that. Our young people are studying Romans chapters 3 and 4. Uh, and uh, we have two different teams uh, come from our church here, a guys team and a girls team. Uh, and so they'll be quizzing. Uh, on Saturday, December 12th. I would encourage all of you to come and to cheer our young people on, uh, and then we'll be feeding uh, feeding everybody, and there'll be an activity afterwards as well for the young people. And so that'll be December 12th. I encourage all of you to come be a part of that. And then Friday, December 11th, we'll have uh, our adult Christmas party, uh, at, uh, or our church-wide Christmas party at uh, my house, and that'll be Friday at 6 p.m. Adults bring in an ornament, uh, that is wrapped for the ornament exchange and also finger food uh, to share. Uh, and then also children that are there are encouraged to bring a small gift as well to exchange for children's gift exchange. So that'd be a great time. Fellowship. So we got much fellowship coming up. Don't miss out on these opportunities. I hope you can be a part of them uh, as, uh, as the Lord allows. I'm going to ask for a minute if they would to come. And we're going to receive our offering uh, this morning, and so I encourage you once again, you give as the Lord has blessed you. If you're a guest with us today, uh, and you filled out that connection card, be sure to drop that in the offering plate as it comes by in just a moment. I'm going to ask Connor, if he would, to turn and ask the Lord's blessing on, on the offering. Dearly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come into your house, Lord, and learn, learn your word and sing praises to you. Pray, Lord, for the gift and the giver, gift and the gift. Pray, Lord, that the rest of the day goes well. Be with pastors. He's going to be preaching to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
turn in your Bibles to Psalm number 100. Psalm number 100. And we're going to read, uh, read the five verses of this psalm together. We'll read them in unison. And so Psalm number 100. We'll give you a second to get caught up there. Psalm 100. We're we'll going to read together verse number 1, continue all the way down to the end of the psalm. All right, let's begin. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor Barnett, if he would, to ask the Lord's blessing on the scripture reading, and then also on the message to follow in just a few moments. Pastor Barnett. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the privilege we have of knowing thee as our Heavenly Father, who loved us when we were unlovable, sent thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to this world while we were yet sinners in rebellion against thee, died for our sins on the cross, was buried and rose again to give us assurance of forgiveness of sin and eternal life. As we sang, Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, there is no one that we love more than the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. We pray thy Holy Spirit would guide and direct to fill our pastor with thy person and give him liberty and wisdom, uh, Lord, to speak that word to us during this hour. We pray for each and every one here. If there be any lost, that they will be evangelized, that all of us will be edified and encouraged because we have met together in thy house to worship and to glorify thee. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. Turn in your hymn books to hymn number 155. And as we sing together, number 155, our young people up through the fourth grade, they can be dismissed to junior church at this time. Let's sing it together, number 155. Christmas countdown 
uh, dates to a Christmas counter, and uh, uh, and I put that thing up as, as quick as I can. My wife makes me take it down, uh, and so I apologize, Todd, for that. Uh, my wife makes me take it down uh, for certain parts of the year. Well, I was allowed to put it back up. Uh, and uh, so now we've got the countdown at our house, ready to roll. There's 32 days until Christmas, uh, 32 days and 13 hours and one minute until Christmas Day. Uh, and it's coming close. For those of you who aren't that specific, there's 33 days, okay? Uh, but man, and we're, we're getting close. And I love this time of year uh, and uh, love the Thanksgiving season as well. Uh, and uh, not just because uh, of the food, although that's a great, a great thing. But you know what? It just seems that people are nicer this time of year, uh, during Thanksgiving and uh, during uh, uh, during Christmas. Uh, people just seem to be nicer. And uh, I don't, I don't know about this year, but we can't see anybody's expressions on their faces uh, uh, most places because of the uh, uh, because of wearing masks and all of that. But. Uh, uh, but man, I just love this time of year. How many of you, let me just ask a question here. How many of you have a Christmas tree already set up in your house? All right, great, great Christmas spirit. Put your hands down. I don't even want to say it, but how many Scrooges do we have in here? So, man, it is too early. Too early for Christmas trees. All right, well, we'll pray for you. Uh, and uh, uh, to each his own, I guess, on that. But uh, uh, I, just, I just love this time of year. I've told you before, uh, my kids, they never stopped singing Christmas carols from last Christmas. Uh, and so we still, all year we've had the Christmas CDs in the car, and we've been listening to them all year. And so uh, I, uh, the kids have actually started calling me Father Christmas. That's what they started calling me. And I, I don't answer them unless they call me Father Christmas. That's it. they got to call me Father Christmas. Not that they get some more gifts, but I just like to hear that. But, uh, but man, I'm just excited about this time of year. I want to encourage you again. If you can't be here tonight, uh, as we enjoy some great food and some fellowship together, uh, then Tuesday, I want to encourage you to be here once again as we share what the Lord has done in our lives uh, through 2020. We're in Psalm number 100, and uh, we're going to focus primarily on the last verse of this psalm. Uh, we're going to focus on that, but I want to just uh, quickly walk through this psalm once again. Uh, and, and I just want, really want to get you to see how good we've got it. Because we know Jesus Christ. Because we know the truth of God's word. You know, there's a world out there that doesn't have any clue about who God is. Right, right. There's, a, there's a, an America out there that has really lost their way and they don't know this book. Right. Right. Be thankful this morning that we do. Right. We know the truth of God's word. And, and once again, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior... I've, I've been praying that you would come to know him, and I pray that today will be that day where you come to know Christ as your Savior. You realize the truth of God's word. Let's look at Psalm 100. The Bible tells us in verse number 1, and this is so exciting here. The Bible tells us, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Man, the church house should be one of the most exciting places on the face of the earth. Uh, and, and, and then if you can't have fun in church, where are you going to have it? I mean, we, we know God. We know how this whole world is going to end. We know how eternity is going to be. Right. So we should be making a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'm going to be honest with you. For many, some of the funnest places on earth are amusement parks. Uh, you know it. I hate amusement parks. I can't stand the rides. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't get the point of it. Why go up on top of a ride, get scared half to death, and then feel sick the whole rest of the day? To me, that just doesn't sound fun. Now, we'll all feel sick Thursday after we eat all that, all that food. You know, well, uh, that's how I feel after riding roller coasters. And it's just not cool. But you know what? If you, if you, I don't know when the last time is that you went to an amusement park, but as you go to the, and you walk up to the gates of the amusement park, what do you hear as you make your way to that gate of the amusement park? You hear a bunch of screaming, yelling, laughing. You hear joy and excitement. Uh, I'll say you hear uh, screams of terror, but, but that's not what it is. It's screams of enjoyment for people that are riding those rides. And they're making, if you will, they're making a joyful noise because of what they are experiencing at that amusement park. Yeah. Let me tell you this. 
That same joy that is had at the amusement park is the joy that a believer feels every single day. Amen. And should feel every single day. Because we know the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all you lands. Here, unfortunately, is how many Christians are. Ready? That's, that's a great thing. That's good. Praise the Lord. That's how we are. As Christians. For people that have, have it all. And people who know God's word and know how everything ends and how everything began. But there should be a little bit more enthusiasm than just a, hey, praise the Lord. I mean, where's the, we're to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Man, I, I love singing the, uh, the songs that we sang this morning. Oh, how I love Jesus. And the other song, I love singing those songs because I do love Jesus. Amen. If I talk to my wife and say, hey, honey, I love you. What's going on, dude? Um, is that, that wouldn't be good. You know, there's, there's a certain way in which I address my wife and I tell my wife that I love her and I show my wife that I love her. Now, it doesn't mean every time I'm like, oh, honey, I love you. Okay, I'm not like that all the time. Okay, But, but there should be some, some proof, some evidence that I do love her. And, and I, make that, I make that noise, that joyful, like, hey, I love you, honey. Thank you. That's the way it should be for the Lord. We make a joyful noise unto the Lord in all ye lands. I've told you this. Now, I love going to sporting events and... Uh, and ball games and all of that. And, and when I'm there, I'm not just sitting back quietly most of the time. Now, if my team's doing horrible, I'll kind of hide underneath the chair and, and I'll still be there. But I'm not, uh, I'm not getting embarrassed like that. And I'll maybe take my hat off and say, I don't know whose team that is out there, but that ain't mine. So you know, when my team's doing good, man, I'm on it. And I'm cheering. I'm standing up and I, I'm shouting and yelling because, man, my team's winning. Let me tell you something. There's victory in Jesus. Amen. And let it be known today that there's no question that our team, Jesus' team, is going to win. Amen. It's, it's already a foreordained that he's won. Our God is in all, he's above all, and he, he's continually working in our life, and he's guaranteed victory. So we can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Look with me at verse number two. Not only do we verbally express our gratitude and thanks to the Lord by making a joyful noise. But then it says, verse number two, serve the Lord with, what's that next word? Serve the Lord with? Gladness. Oh, serve the Lord with? Gladness. gladness. Oh, man, we are missing this in our lives today. Serving the Lord with gladness. Amen. A lot, most of the time, we're a lot like my kids when I tell them to do the dishes. I'm going to be honest with you, there's not a whole lot of gladness. Yay, I get to do the dishes. You know, that's not happening. You know, and, and we're to serve the Lord with gladness. And, uh, and, and we're to tell others about Jesus Christ. And, and those who are involved in ministry, man, I'm so thankful for your uh, faithfulness to the Lord. You, you teach Sunday school. Let's, let's teach Sunday school with gladness. Hey, let's, uh, those of you who, who are able to work in the rock or Wednesday night children's ministry, hey, let's serve those young people with gladness. Uh, the choir ministry, sing with gladness, serve the Lord with gladness. Those who clean the buildings and, uh, man, let's serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. It says to come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence with singing. I, I don't sing well, but I love to sing. And that's why I believe verse number one says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, because sometimes all of us, we're just making a joyful noise, because honestly, uh, we can't sing. Uh, so let's make that joy, come before his presence with singing. That's why when we come together, we worship the Lord together in song, we're coming before his presence with singing. Verse number three, know ye that the Lord, he is God. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, we're not an accident, and not we ourselves. We are sustained by God. I don't know how many of you this morning woke up and said, man, I forgot last night to tell my heart to beat. Whoa, it's amazing I survived the night. I, mean, I forgot to I forgot to tell myself last night to, to continue to breathe. 
God directs our hearts, our breathing. He's the one that fills our air with lungs. He's the one that makes our, our heart beat. We don't think about that. God's the one that just does that for us. It's not we ourselves. We need God. It says not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. It's my prayer this morning that you would know that the Lord, he is God. You know one of the fastest growing, we'll call it a religion, one of the fastest growing religions in the world today, you know what it is? Atheism. Atheism. The belief that there is no God. I'm here to tell you this morning that there is a God. And the question for you is, do you know that there is a God? And you know, Satan has, uh, he's a mastermind, and he has slowly chipped away at God and, uh, and his creation for the last 6,000 plus years. Uh, uh, he's uh, been, been knocking away at the foundations of the Word of God, and he's cast significant doubt upon his cre uh, the Lord's creation. For if mankind does not believe that they were created by God, then really, what are we doing here? Right. We have no purpose in life. We're just like the, uh, I, I like watching some of those uh, animal shows on, on the Discovery Channel and all that, and watch all the animals in Africa there. You know what, if, if, if there is no God, we have no purpose, we're no better than the zebra running around in, the, uh, in, in Africa there. We've got no purpose. We're just somebody else's dinner eventually. But you know what, we're, we're so much more than that. God has created us. And don't believe the lie that Satan has been spreading for years of, of man, we're just here by accident. And, uh, and there's a big uh, 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 explosion or a big bang that happened billions of years ago. And here we are, billions of years later. It's a lie. Straight from Satan. Trying to get you to doubt that God has a purpose for your life. Look at verse, look at verse number four. The Bible says, enter into his gates with, what is that word? And thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be what Amen. thankful unto him and bless his name Amen. I've heard it said this way that the life that we are living now as Christians should be really a thank you note to God right. Amen. our life is a thank you note to God for what he has done for us yeah. And so when we read this verse here, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, be thankful to him and bless his name. Hey, everything we say and do is a thank you back to the Lord. Amen. Now, why? We read these first four verses. Why is it that we should make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Why is it that we should serve the Lord with gladness? Why is it that we should come for his presence with singing? Why is it that we should know that the Lord is God? Why is it that we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise? Why? Look at verse number 5. Here's why we do all of those things. Verse number 5 tells us, first of all, number 1, for the Lord is good. That's why we make a joyful noise. We serve with gladness. We come before his presence with singing. We know the Lord is God. We enter in his gates with thanksgiving because he's good. We see also that his mercy is ever Lasting. And we see in his truth endureth to all generations. I want to share with you just a few thoughts, if you will, a few ways in which we, we see and we know that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Let me give you just four, four reasons. We, we could give a whole lot more than that, but four reasons why we know that the Lord is good. First of all, number one, if you're keeping notes, it's this. It's the fact that he created us. The Lord is good. The fact that we have life means that the Lord is good. Go with me to Genesis chapter number 2. We see God has created us. And I know we, well, I've already mentioned it a little bit about uh, God's creation. But he created us physically. In, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7, it tells us, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, 
And man became a living soul. God created mankind out of the dust of the ground. God created everything that is in the world. Uh, in six days, he created everything. On the seventh day, he rested. And we get that seven-day week. But you know, as you walk through Genesis chapter 1, and you read about the different days where God created everything, at the end of each day, God says that everything that he created it was good. But you know what? You get to chapter 2, we find that God has another creation. That being mankind. Really, we can say the, the crown of his creation. For mankind was created in the image of God. And so to doubt God's creation is to doubt who God is. To say that we have just evolved over billions of years is to say, God, we were not created in your image. And it's a very direct attack on who God is. But we doubt his creation. And that Satan has, over the last several hundred years, has caused mankind to believe a lie in this evolution. And he's cast doubt on the first several chapters of the Bible. Let me tell you something. If Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1, which tells us, in the beginning God created heaven and the earth. If that is not true, then nothing in this Bible is true. Amen. Very true. Very true. Every word of God is true. Amen. In fact, we find the book of John, chapter number one, we find the Bible tells us in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. To doubt God's Word is to doubt Jesus Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. God created us physically. I want to tell you something. July 4th, 1980, the world became a better place. Because I was born into it. That's what I like to think of these. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I'm told oftentimes that no, that's not true. But that's, that's my belief. And so I have a physical birthday. That being July 4th, 1980. Now, before we move on, let me tell you. I was alive and well for nearly nine months before that. Right. And so, yes, July 4, 1980 is, is my birthday. I breathed my first fresh breath of, of my first breath of fresh air. But I was alive and well in my mother's womb. Right. All right. life is alive and well in my mother's womb. That's right. Amen. We find here that not only must we have this physical birthday, that being for me, July 4, 1980, but you know what? God has created us not only physically, but man, we must be born spiritually as well. You see, the Bible tells us in, in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 10, you don't have to turn there, tells us, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. You know what? God creates us spiritually as well. Uh, and we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You know, the Bible speaks, and we'll talk about this in just a few moments. Actually, Jesus speaks where he says, uh, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way of salvation. That's through Jesus Christ alone. You're not going to hear that in our world today. You won't hear that on CNN, MSNBC, or, or Fox News. You're not going to hear that. In fact, uh, in recent years, we've seen how uh, individuals and, uh, and even individuals in the Mormon faith have said, you know what, there's multiple paths to God. We find that uh, uh, the Roman Catholics or the Catholics and, and, and the Muslims are, are slowly joining together, it appears, forming this maybe one world religion that the Bible talks about in Revelation. And so we see this mixing and blending of faiths. But I'm here to tell you this. It's only one way. Amen. Come on, one Amen. way. Praise Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the only way of salvation. And don't believe the lie of the world, the lie of the devil, and say, hey, you can get there any way you want. It's through Jesus Christ alone. And Christian today, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. In fact, Philippians tells us this, being confident of this very thing. Get this now. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Right. We can be confident this morning 
in our salvation because it doesn't rest in me. My salvation doesn't rest in what I do. It rests in what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. And so I don't need to worry. I don't need to fear today because Jesus has saved me, not me. We can be confident. And let me say this. Those of you who know Christ as your Savior, you can also be confident. And when the Holy Spirit leads in your life, you can be confident that God knows what he's doing. You're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. I'll tell you this. I, I like to think that I could be a star on HGTV. I like to think that. I like to think, man, I could come up with grand designs and schemes and put all the stuff together and, uh, and uh, you know, enjoy the demo day of things and, uh, man, put all, and, and boom, there it is. I like to think that my wife and I, we could be Chip and Joanna Gaines. Anyway, I don't know. I don't see that happening. But you know what? I like to think I could. I have a hard time putting a nail on the wall to hang a picture on it, okay? So that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. But when I'm, when I'm working on something or, or putting something together, I'm not always confident in my ability. In fact, I'm not always confident in the direction that I'm given either. I don't know if any of you can sympathize with that. I don't know. Not always confident in that. There's one person that we can have 100% confidence for everything in our life. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And you know what? He saved you. He bought you with his precious blood. And he's got a precious plan for your life. Right. Don't doubt him. Be confident that he will perform that plan in your life. Let's live the life that he has planned for you. Man, we, uh, he's created us. Uh, and, and we must have two spiritual birth, or two birthdays. Yeah. I have a physical birthday. I told you July 4, 1980. I have a spiritual birthday. In August of 1986, I prayed and asked Jesus and believed with all my heart. And I asked Jesus to save me from my sin. So I've got two birthdays now. A physical one and a spiritual one. And before you leave this earth, whether it be uh, by death or by Jesus uh, rapturing the church out or, or, or living through the tribulation. And, uh, before you leave this earth, there's got to be a time in your life when you have that second birthday. There's got to be a time when you trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And let me tell you, it's more than just a prayer. It's a believing with all of your heart that Jesus is your Savior. And there's got to be a time in your life to do that. You've got to have two birthdays. The Lord is good. He's created us. Created us physically, and that's why we're here. And then he wants to uh, 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 create us spiritually as well and begin a work in us that only he can do. Let's go to the second thing. How else do we know that the Lord is good? Not only the fact that he created us, and that's pretty exciting, but also the fact that he loves us. Amen. He loves us. Go with me to the last book of the Bible in Revelation chapter number 1. Revelation chapter number 1. We read of God's love for us. In Revelation 1, and, and down in Verse number five. We'll start at verse number four. John, Revelation one and verse number four says, John of the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from, uh, from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. We find a verse, baby, that, that you're very familiar with. John chapter 3 and verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. To think that God loves you. Amen. And God loves me personally. Right. Man. That's the love that God has for you and for me. You know something? Mankind is going to fail us in many ways. God will never fail us. His love never fails. You know, friends are going to come and go. God doesn't. Right. God always loves. He always loves us. And, and that is an evidence that God is good because he loves us. He loves us. In fact, we find this. He loved us even when we were undesirable. 
Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8 tells us this way. But God commendeth his love toward us. Stating, hey, really just say, hey, God loves us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. That's amazing to think about. That while we were sinners, while we were uh, at our worst, God loved us. It's like this. I am a, I'm a big fan of Little Caesar's Pizza. Uh, and there's multiple reasons. Some of you might not think it's that good a pizza, but it's pretty good. I like it. I like it because the cost is good, okay? That's one reason. Uh, and you can afford it. But anyway, I like Little Caesar's Pizza. So I'll, I'll order that. I'll take it home. We'll eat it. We'll enjoy it. But you know what I don't like? Little Caesar's Pizza the next day. I don't like that. It's like chewing on a piece of cardboard. Right. Or, or, or some uh, drywall. I'm just like, what is that? That's not even pizza anymore. I make my kids eat it. They don't. They don't know the difference, really. But, but I know the difference. So I'm like, man, I I can't do this. I've got to have some fresh pizza. And so you know what? That leftover pizza is undesirable to me. And so I'm not going to go out of my way to go have some leftover Little Caesars pizza. I love the fresh, the hot. The red. Sorry, George. I know you're working pizza place. So I don't mean to offend you, but I like Little Caesars pizza. Okay. This God's love for us. Even when we were, if you will, that leftover pizza, right. God still loved us. Amen. Man, when we are at our worst, God loves us. Turn, if you will, with me to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. And down in uh, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23. <coughs> Romans 3, verse 23 tells us this. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's us. We've sinned. We've come short of God's glory. We can't measure up to God's standard of holiness. Verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God became, and you see that word in there, he's our propitiation. Our propitiation. You might sit there, I don't even know how to say that word, let alone spell that word. What in the world does that word mean? Propitiation is sim simply this. It's simply Jesus' sacrifice of his life, and his shed blood upon the cross of Calvary. It satisfied God's demands for the punishment of our sin. Amen. So Jesus' sacrifice, he died for us. And Jesus' sacrifice satisfied God's demands. Yeah. And so now we can stand before Jesus free, or before God free, because of Jesus' sacrifice. If we would trust him. God loves us. For God is good. He, the fact that he loves us, even when we're undesirable, proves that he's good. Well, she notice thirdly, and I'm gonna, I let the cat out of the bag a little bit, but thirdly here, what is another evidence that God loves us? Is the fact that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. Mm -hmm. The fact that Jesus died for us. First Corinthians chapter 15 tells us this. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Who did Jesus come to die for? Me. Who did Jesus come to die for? How? Who did Jesus come to die for? Pastor Who did Jesus come to die for? Put your name in the blank. Right. That's who Jesus came to die for. He died for all. And it's important that he died for all because as we already read in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then we find in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 that Jesus had to die because for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because of our sin, we've earned and deserve death and separation from God for all of eternity. Amen. But Jesus died for us. 
He became our propitiation. He satisfied God's demands so that we can have eternity with God. For God so loved the world that he gave. What does it mean that he gave? He gave his son to die for you and for me. If you want to follow me over to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, that's all the way to the back of the Bible there once again. And look with me at verse number 1. 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 1. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, My little children. These things write I unto you that ye may sin, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. If you were in Dave's Sunday School class this morning, you heard a little bit about the advocate uh, 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 to the Father, with the Father. That's Jesus Christ. He's there on our behalf. Verse number two, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The whole world means you and me. And Jesus became the sacrifice for us. He died for our sins so that we might have life. So that we might have eternal life and then that we might have the abundant life on this earth. Guess what? I'm going to be honest with you. Is life difficult? You bet it is. Has 2020 been a cakewalk? <laughs> Maybe not. It's been a little strange. But you know what? We can still live that abundant life because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Doesn't matter what the world throws our way. Doesn't matter what Satan throws our way. Doesn't matter the trial, the difficulty that we may experience. We've got the Lord, Jesus Christ, who's in control. And no matter how difficult life gets, we can still say, man, we are living the abundant life Amen. because we know Jesus Christ. Right. In fact, we find, and I, I, say, I mention this often, we find in the scripture that as Christians, we can experience a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. That man, even when uh, in our darkest hours on this earth, we can still have peace because of our relationship with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. We have peace, we have peace with God. You know, a couple weeks ago, and I've shared this with you, a couple weeks ago we celebrated my daughter Noelle's birthday. And she is eight, nine. She was eight turning. Whoa. She, yeah. Okay, don't tell her I messed that up. She's nine. She's one year of double digits. I mean, that's a big deal. She's nine years old. Uh, she was born. And you know what? It was, uh, for, for my wife and I, it was a bit of a scary time. See, she was born about two months early. And she, she weighed three pounds. And we could hold her just like that in our hands. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, uh, my wife gave birth to her. And uh, we got to see her for just a moment. The doctors rushed her away. They put her in an incubator, all that kind of stuff. She had tubes and everything going in and out of her and all that. And, and doctors were like, man, we're just, we'll just see what happens. We'll do the best we can. They gave her steroids and all that to help her lungs mature quicker, faster, all that good stuff. And, uh, and uh, so we just, my wife and I, we prayed. Our family prayed. And we're just trusting the Lord. You know, the hospital for us was an hour away from our house. And we couldn't stay down there with her. She was in the, in the NICU. And so we had to go home. And if you can imagine, ladies, leaving your baby at a hospital and you going home, uh, that's a difficult thing. And so every day after I'd get out of, out of, out of work, I, I taught school and high school and all of that. Every day, we'd make the hour drive down there so that my wife could hold little Noel and take care of her. She spent a couple hours there, and I would take the kids, and we'd go run around the mall or something like that, and she got to spend some time with Noel. And we're told, you know what, you can't, you can't hold her very much because that'll burn calories, and, and she won't gain the weight that she needs. And man, it was a very difficult time for us. And for a month, every day we did that. For a month. Maybe a month and a half. And you know what, during that time... And those are some of the most exciting times of our life, or trying times, but they were exciting times. Because, you know, I know the God who is in control. I know the God who has a plan for every purpose. And, man, we were praying specifically one way, man, God help her to gain weight, help her to get stronger, and help her to get through this. And we were so excited to, to bring her home and all of that. And that was our prayer. But either way, God would have answered that. Man, we still have the abundant life right. because of Jesus Christ. Many of you have gone through difficulties and trials. 
and you've experienced some hardship, you know what? You can have that peace. You can know for sure that the Lord is good, uh, even in the midst of those difficulties, because you've got that personal relationship with him. That brings me to our fourth point here. Fourth reason why we can know that God is good. We know God's good because he created us. We know God's good because he loves us. We know God's good because he died for us. He sent his son Jesus to die for us. But fourthly, we know God is good because he cares for us. He cares for us. He cares for you personally. The Bible tells us in Peter, 1 Peter 5, 7, says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. You've probably heard the saying, I'm going to mess it up. I mess it up every time. You've probably heard the saying, Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. We know that God cares. He said he cares. And, and, and he, he wants what's best for us. And so let me give you just a, a word of caution, if you a word of warning. God wants what's best for us, so let's not fight him when he's moving in our life. Now, let's not fight him on Sunday morning when the, when the pastor gets up or the evangelist or the missionary gets up and starts preaching. We're like, man, is it getting hot in here? Man, God, you can't be speaking to me. Man, this is, uh. Hey, let's just trust the Lord. He cares for us. He wants what's best for you. So trust him. When he says, hey, you need to fix this area in your life, hey, let's fix it. He says, hey, you need to clean up this spot in your life. Hey, let's clean it up. Right. And he says, hey, you need to bring this and add this into your life. Hey, let's bring it in. Let's, if you will, let's upgrade. Because mm -hmm. that's what the Lord wants for us. He cares for us. In fact, we know that uh, uh, the psalmist says he daily loaded us with benefits. That's, that's the God that we know. It's a God that we serve. In Isaiah chapter 41, if you'd like to follow me there, in Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. As we consider this thought that he cares for us, Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not. Why? For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Isaiah 41 verse 10. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's the God I serve. The God I serve tells me not to fear because he's with me. He tells me not to be dismayed because uh, he's, he's my God. And then he says, you know what? I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with thy right hand. That's the God I serve. The God that will strengthen me for my trials and my difficulties. The God that will help get me through. The God that will uphold me when the winds of life are blowing. That's the God I serve. I don't know what it sounds like. It almost sounds like he cares about me. It almost sounds like he loves me. The fact that he wants to strengthen me, help me, home, it sounds like he truly cares. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the Bible says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. The verse I just quoted doesn't mean that life doesn't get difficult. It simply said, all things work together for good. To who? To them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose. Now, why can we say this morning, and the psalmist say in Psalm 100 that the Lord is good? Why? Because he created us. He loves us. He died for us, and he cares for us. So as we read and began our, our sermon this morning, those first four verses of Psalm 100, man, we can make that joyful noise. 
You know, we, we, can, we can serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. And, uh, and, and the list goes on. Why? Because he is good. If you're here this morning and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you need to trust him for the simple fact that he is good. We trust him today. And then Christian, you know Christ. You've trusted him with eternity. Let's trust him for today, knowing that he is good. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time together in your word. God, I'm thankful that you are good. I'm thankful for life and the fact that you created me, you created us. Thankful that you love us, you died for us, that you cared for us. God, I pray that we would live as Psalm 100 kind of characterizes an individual that knows you. That God, we would make a joyful noise. That we would serve you with gladness. Come before your presence with sing. Enter into your gates with thanksgiving. God, may that be our prayer for our life and may we live it out. God, if there's one here that doesn't know you, I pray in the next few moments that that individual or individuals who choose to accept you as their personal Savior. God, I pray that we as Christians would never forget the fact that you are good. With every head bowed and your eye closed, I wonder if there would be one here this morning that would say, Pastor, there's never been a time in my life when I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I've got that physical birthday you talked about, Pastor, but I don't have that spiritual birthday. And I want it. I want to trust Christ as my Savior today. With no one looking around, how many of you would raise your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I don't know Christ as my Savior. I want to know Him. Can I see your hand just quickly? I'm not going to point you out. I just want to pray for you. Anybody at all? I don't know Christ. Second question. Christian, I don't know what you're going through in your life today, but I want you to, to know and be assured of the fact that God is good. I wonder if there would be any today that would say, Pastor, God's spoken to me about an area of my life. Maybe it's an area of your life in which you doubt Him. Maybe an area of your life that you weren't living for Him, but you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? God's spoken to my heart this morning. Would you pray for me? Can I see your hand just quickly? Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. See that hand. Anybody else? The pastor, would you pray for me? God's spoken to me about Aaron in my life. Our dear Heavenly Father, I pray for these. And God, I'm thankful that you're, you're working in our hearts and in our life. I pray for these that have raised their hand. And, and there may have been some that didn't raise their hand. I pray that you continue to do a work in, in, in their hearts and in my heart. And God, I pray that you'd help us to always realize that you are good. Help us to live for you each and every day. I'm going to ask everybody, if you would, please stand. And with your heads bowed and eyes closed, uh, I'm going to ask Ruth to begin playing the, the hymn, I Surrender All. If God's going to work in your heart this morning, he's speaking to you, I encourage you to come. Kneel at this altar. Let's solidify that decision for the Lord. You come at this time. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, I encourage you to come. I love nothing more than to have somebody take the Bible and show you how you can know for sure where you spend an eternity. Now's your time to come. Maybe the Lord's leading you in this in the area of, of baptism, following the Lord and believers' baptism. That's the first step of obedience. You come, we'll tell you how you can be baptized. We have one more verse here that we're just gonna play. You come. Sing just that first verse of I surrender all. 
to live for you, to stand for you, to, to love you, or to reach others for you. You could have used angels to preach the gospel, to minister to people, or you chose to use us. And I know there's different times in our lives when we get discouraged and sometimes distracted. But Father, you're always on the throne. You're always in control. You're always aware of what's going on around us. And Lord, you always care. Thank you for the, for the message this morning. The fact that you love us, Lord, that you, that you die for us, that you desire to save us. Lord, the fact that you care. Help us to share that care with those that are around us. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless this church here in Raleigh, Michigan, Calvary Baptist Church. Sweet people here. Use us, Lord, for your honor and your glory. Bless the service tonight. It's exciting to see that even though there will be some special meetings and special food and so forth, Lord, they're going to make sure they include your word as part of that. How fitting, how appropriate, Lord, how right. Continue to bless this ministry, this pastor, these people. We ask in Christ's name for his sake. Amen.